Get the insider scoop on the hottest new attraction in Orlando. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. Hey, Tamara. So we are going to jump in with Eric, one of our friends, and talk all about Universal Orlando's new water park, Volcano Bay. But before we get talking to Eric, I thought maybe we could chit chat a little bit about water parks and sun safety, since I know a lot of families are hitting the beach and going to water parks for their summer vacation. So what do you have? Any tips about maybe water parks or things you pack or special tips you'd have for people? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I remember like three summers ago or two summers ago, we, Hannah and I were like, this is like the summer of the water park <laughs> because <laughs> we went to uh, we had gone to Great Wolf Lodge and then we went to uh, there's a, a water park at the a hotel up in New Hampshire. And then we had gone to the Kalahari Resort in the Poconos, which is a really large um, indoor water park as well. And then we went to Water Country USA down in Williamsburg, Virginia. So you would think I would become an expert at it. But I think the things that I learned are definitely you want you want to have you want to think about your bathing suit. And maybe I think about this more as an adult than I than for kids. But it's one thing when you have a bathing suit and you're just like sitting on the beach or you're going into the pool, but when you're actually like walking around a water park, I don't know about you, but I'm not like super comfortable just like walking around, you know, with, with shoes on walking around everywhere, uh, in just my bathing suit. So I liked to have one that maybe had like a little skirt or I wore like those board shorts that I might wear if I was doing like stand up paddle boarding or kayaking or, you know, stuff that can get wet, but still was, a little bit more modest, I guess. But again, I feel like that's probably just me. I mean, obviously for the kids, like they didn't care, but I did feel like for her, like wearing something that was like covered a little bit more like a rash guard was helpful because then you didn't have to worry as much about the sun and reapplying and a lot of like body slides can like hurt your back. You know, have you gone on those body slides where it kind of like rubs on your back. So having like, you know, maybe a one piece, yeah. Like doing like a one piece or a rash guard or something could be helpful there. I don't know. What do you, do you agree or what, what, what's your water park attire? (laughs) Yeah, I do agree. I, I think I've gotten a little bit more as I've gotten older. I'm just kind of like, I don't really care. I, I try to have a little more self-confidence. So I I typically like to wear two-piece swimsuits because peeing in a one-piece, like in a water park, it's like, ugh. So that would be my number one tip would be like women, two-pieces are the way to go. So even if you get, like you said, I have a few that have like kind of the built-in little skirt. They're not total mom wear where it's not the, you know, it's not the whole flowy skirt, but they're just kind of a little shorter. Um, But I also think sarongs are really cool, especially like lightweight ones, because they can also be used like quick little towels if you just want to, yeah, you know, dry off something or um, dry off your hand if you're going to use your phone or something, even though, you know, you don't need your phone when you're at a water park. But you can also use a sarong to like dip it in water and put it around your neck if you're kind of hot. And so lightweight sarongs, I think, work well that way where you can use it in a few different ways. And then you can, if you're going to be walking around, like to go stand in line to order lunch or something, you can tie it around your waist and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable. So. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like you're pulling on or off, you know, a cover up, which, you know, is a little bit more of a hassle. So yeah, Yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's one. And then, yeah, the shoe thing always gets me because I know a lot of water slides and stuff don't allow aqua socks. So I would tell people like, you think that you're being smart by having your kids right, wear aqua right. socks, but a lot of slides don't allow them. So flip flops sometimes are just as good because they are easy to take on and off. But I know my kids just kind of like walking in bare feet, but the the pavement can get so hot. So yeah, that bothers me a lot. So yeah. I would say like you know do flip flops, but just don't make them you know your expensive exactly Sperry flip flops or something exactly. <laughs> like, like yeah, your cheap flip flops navy so buy your, right. go to old navy and buy your chair your you know 2 for 5 dollar pair exactly yeah that's a good tip 
maybe put your name on them so you know which you know that they're yours when you yeah. come off and there's oh, like a pile smart. of them yeah or have your kids it could be a craft before you leave right have them do some kind of there's so many things on pinterest about how to like dress up cheapo flip-flops so go to the dollar store and get some flip-flops and then i don't know tie my one of my kids like tied fabric or wrapped ribbon around it so it's kind of unique but yeah and then a big thing for me is because i do like photos and i am into photography um i use my cell phone for that so i do like to be detached i don't want to be like checking that but I also like to read books sometimes if the kids are playing and I'm relaxing so there I my cell phone again is kind of nice to have and so definitely a waterproof case is nice you can use the you know real waterproof cases like life proof makes some Um, and but I know I have a Samsung that is technically I guess water resistant or something or water I don't know if it's waterproof. You can submerge it, but you have to just be careful and don't plug it in, I think, afterwards. Um, But I, for our river rafting trip, I just bought one of those cheapo plastic pouches that kind of has a ceiling lock off the top and just get one that floats because that's the biggest thing with my phone. I know it can get wet, but it can sink. (laughs) So, you know, look for maybe a floating some kind of floating pouch or something. And then the or at least one of the pouches that has the, you know, the strap that goes around your neck. Yeah. But I, it sounds, I'm guessing on water slides and stuff, you wouldn't be able to wear it. So then you've got to figure out where to store it. So right. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if maybe it's the best to just say, take your picture at the morning or right when you're leaving that's, and then. That's kind of what I do is like I, because I don't go on all the slides anyway. So I'm usually like, I'll take some pictures and then I'll store it for a while, you know, so I, yeah. I kind of walk around with it. And I still want to have the waterproof case, especially because, you know, I want to go down like, it, I don't know if Hannah's in the, the wave pool or something, you know, yeah. I want to go down and, and be there and take the picture, but then I want to go back and store it so that yeah. I can enjoy, you know, enjoy it too. Cause there are very few, I mean, we've done quite a few things where we wanted to get some video too. So we do have like the chest harness for the GoPro, yeah. but there are a lot of slides that won't allow that yeah. as well. So I'll usually send Hannah up first and I'll be like, <laughs> when you get to the top, like ask them if we can do this. And then the second time we do it, then we'll record it. But many yes. times, you know, you're not allowed to. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, very cool. And then maybe thoughts on sun safety is just, yeah, sunscreen, 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 right? Um, Yeah, and and hydration, because I feel like with water parks, like people feel like they're wet. (laughs) So maybe they're not as thirsty because like you've cooled off, you know, you've cooled off your body, but you still really need to hydrate. And so I feel like even more than a theme park where people are thirsty because, you know, you feel the sun more when you're wet. You don't always feel the effects as much. I feel like that with sunscreen and with just hydration that you need to stay on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like setting a timer because sunscreen, I feel like is just so easy to f- do it once in the morning. Like, oh, I'm going to be a good mom and put my kit and then you get busy and you forget. Right. But definitely make, you know, like every hour they say, but do the best you can on reapplying. And the thing about hydration that's important, I think, especially with kids is that, and we learned this on our recent river rafting trip is they're like, yes, drink, 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 drink. You know, they're all about that, but they've had some issues with people becoming, I guess there's a term for it, like hypernutriment or something like that. And they drink so much water, but they're not getting enough electrolytes because they're not eating. Mm. Um, and so then they, it, it's just, it's just as bad as becoming dehydrated. So make sure your kids are eating also, or, you know, you're getting electrolytes like those salts and stuff somehow, um, through food or through a Gatorade or something. Yeah. When we were in, uh, when we were in Disney, uh, back in June, it was so hot that one day and, you know, we were we were all out doing parks, you know, from seven thirty in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. And in the middle of the day, like no one was really hungry, but I just knew I could just look at them. I'm like, we need something. So I had to search out a place that had like, like a vitamin water or, you know, one of the a water that had something like that because, and, and immediately like they, they perked up. It's like, you could just tell that they needed, yeah. you know, like they were fading and yeah. that scares me. I mean, I've seen kids pass out, you know, from heat. So Yeah, definitely make sure you keep an eye on those electrolytes. And I think that would be the other thing is my last little tip would be, I mean, we have allergies and stuff, but just, you know, don't stress about food and snacks and buying, you know, a Gatorade or something, just budget for that, for that day. And yeah, um, because you do not want to manage 
you know, bringing in your own sandwiches or so I, you know, even if it's allowed, you don't, you don't want to manage all that. So just budget and splurge and go eat where you want to eat. And based on our water park experiences, I would advise to eat off hours if you can. So fill up for a really big breakfast or eat a really early lunch. Because if you try and eat between, you know, that lunch peak of 1130 to 130, you're going to have long lines is that's been my experience. I don't know if at Volcano Bay, maybe they have enough eateries that it's not a problem, but no, it's a huge problem. I actually, I was feeling really lightheaded when I was at Volcano Bay. So I went probably at like 11 or 1130 and got myself something to eat. And I pretty much just walked right up, picked what I wanted. They're very good. And I've noticed this at like Disney places too, where they present you with the menu first, Yeah, you know, and then, so they're trying to speed up the whole process. Like there's people managing the queue even for the restaurants, but I had no problem. But then like a half hour later when Hannah and Ruby were hungry, it was, you know, huge, huge, huge lines and nowhere to sit. So yep. I, I definitely agree. Even if it's like 1130 versus 12, it yep. makes a huge difference. Yeah, definitely try and eat outside of those times. So very good. I think I think my other tip would be just, you know, in terms of bringing towels, like I think sometimes we get used to going to a hotel pool where towels are provided. Um, so water parks aren't usually providing towels unless mm-hmm. you're renting them. And that's, you know, another expense that you don't need. I feel like if you're driving you know, even if you're doing a road trip, like if you just put some towels in your car, because honestly, with a road trip, there's always a need for towels. Like whether you stop and you're like stop at a beach, need to brush off your feet or you're just like climbing through a creek, like, you know, I don't know, you just kind of always need towels. But Mm -hmm. when we were down in Orlando, I brought towels, but I brought kind of like our cheapo towels that I didn't Mm -hmm. care if we tossed and we ended up like leaving them just because you know, like whether it's weight limits or space or whatever. So like, you know, maybe bring ones that you don't mind if you lose or, or leave. You know, what happened to us is we got stuck in the pouring rain at Volcano Bay and we, I had left the towels on the chairs to <laughs> save our chairs in case it stopped and we wanted to go back to the chairs. And at at that point I was like, you know what, I'm just leaving them there because they are so soaking wet. They're never going to get dry. I don't feel like carrying them around. I'm like, forget it. Like we have so many more like beach towels at home. So yeah, that's kind of a good idea. And then I know for us, you know, with our river rafting, we actually packed, uh, we have these, I think they're called discovery trek. And so they're made specifically for active people. So, um, and they're kind of a, a really thin, uh, material that, is packable and they work well as a cooling towel. So you can, we used it a lot like dunking in the river and keeping it on our neck and covering our legs and stuff, but they also dry once they're dry. And so they're really thin. And so those, if you're another, you know, if you do want to invest or if you do have those kind of towels, those mic, these ones weren't microfibers per se. So I don't know exactly what they are. We also packed a microfiber one. So those are sometimes thinner and um, work really well. We'll have to link to that in our show notes because that seems like a good, yeah, a good idea. Yep, great. Cool. Well, I think it's time that we jump in and talk to you and to Eric all about Volcano Bay. Yeah, I can't wait to share. It's such a hot new place. We're here today with Eric Stone. He's the writer and photographer specializing in family travel based in California. His goal is to encourage everyone to take their kids to unique destinations and provide, he provides firsthand information through travelbabo.com to make it easier for people to plan those trips. He's traveled with his three kids to 46 countries and seven continents, each with his kids getting to choose any destination in the world every year for a one-on-one trip. So welcome, Eric. Welcome back, I should say. Thank you much, girls. It's great to be back. Yeah, for those that don't remember, you were one of our uh, early podcast guests and we were talking about bucket list travel because I think even more now, Kim and I would probably like to be one of your kids and and get to go on one of those uh, trips. (laughs) Yeah, how can that happen? (laughs) Yeah, it might be a problem because I might be older than Eric, so that would would really not work so well being his kid. I Um, I, I get a lot of uh, kid requests like that, though. We're just having fun. Hopefully I inspire people to... uh, to mimic what we are doing. So, uh, so I, I ideally don't need to take everyone along with us, um, other than <laughs> virtually, but, um, anyways, I'd be willing to meet either one of you over there, uh, anywhere in the world, anytime. That'd be yeah. Fun. 
I think it's, you know, just seeing, I know Tamara is really good about doing the one-on-one trips with Hannah and then seeing how you do it with your kids too. It's, it's definitely inspired me to kind of focus on that aspect because I do believe that there is a different interaction that occurs between parents and their kids when they're one-on-one versus when it's a whole family trip, which I think both ways are great, but it definitely is something special. Yeah, and, and the flip side is at home during that week or two, uh, my wife has a different combination of kids, and, and the dynamic there is very different too. And it, it's it's a different relationship, and and it's not all three kids running around uh, fighting or getting bored or, or whatever. So I, I think it works on both levels. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I will say, like, I only have one. So you would think, well, what's the difference if we're home or if we're away? But it's just like family travel. I mean, when you are outside of your home and away from, you know, the errands, chores, activities and all that stuff, you just make different connections. You know, you're experiencing things differently. You're you're having a different type of quality time together. So it does make a difference no matter how many kids. Absolutely. Yeah. So before we get started talking about the brand new Volcano Bay Water Park that is at Universal, why don't you, well, I guess we already kind of went through kids, right? I have three kids, seven, nine, and 11 right now, girl, boy, and girl. So you're getting closer to those teenage years. Oh, I feel like my 11-year-old has been a teenager for about the last five years. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Just wait. (laughs) I'm like, I, I thought that, but then now, yeah, no. Yeah. (laughs) They're always evolving. Great. Yeah. So, so I know that you're an ambassador for Universal Orlando. Um, Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what that means. Um, But I know that as part of that, you were also one of the first people to go and try uh, Universal's Volcano Bay. Um, But can you tell us a little bit more about what your role is with, with Universal Orlando? So about a year ago, Universal contacted me and I think maybe nine others. Uh, they were forming their first blog squad is what they call it. But really, it's, it's, it's kind of an ambassador uh, program where several times a year they bring all of us together in Orlando and they take us behind the scenes. We meet uh, the ride designers. We kind of learn about what's coming up as, as far as new things that maybe haven't been announced yet. For things like Halloween Horror Nights last year, uh, we went through all of the houses at, at first um, during the day and, and got to see uh, what a, most people don't see as far as like all of the detail that goes into these that, that when you're going through at night and it's dark and you're being scared, you're, you're not appreciating just in how much you know work went into these over the course of months and months and months and every little detail and uh, the, the Hulk coaster and meeting meeting the designers, the, the people that uh, put the music together with the ride. And it was, it was, it's just been fascinating over the last year going through and, and seeing all of this from the inside and, and getting to do things like attend the grand opening of Volcano Bay, um, go to Media Day there where we really got to try everything out without any crowds, uh, that type of thing. So, uh, so really, it, it's a paid ambassadorship program. But that doesn't mean that I can't say what I want to say as far as, you know, honestly giving people advice about Disney versus Universal, what we like, what we don't like, et cetera. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's good, too, because you were there for the opening, which is obviously a different experience from being there as kind of the regular family. And I was there probably a couple of weeks later as a regular family. So we can kind of compare and contrast and, and talk about those experiences, too. Perfect. So how does Volcano Bay compare to other water parks that you've been to, Eric? So we are not much of a water park family. We, we've never really searched out water parks around the world or anything like that. We, we've been to a handful that are that are far smaller and, and definitely not on the scale of Volcano Bay. So so to me, Volcano Bay was, was eye-opening and just amazing as, as far as all of the attention to detail, uh, what they had done, how, how many – rides there are the the cabanas um the central pool all of that um if there are comparable parks uh to that i haven't been to them and i will say you know we have not done a lot either like i haven't done the other ones in orlando but we have done like water country and williamsburg and we've done a number of the uh, indoor ones i mean kim and i have both been to great wolf lodges but I think for me, the the big difference was that when you are on the beach in front of the big wave pool, which is in front of the giant volcano, you know, you're kind of, you can sit there and you can kind of think you're on an island. You know, you're in a beach, there's palm trees overhead, there's some like island music playing, you hear the, the splash of the waterfall. I feel like a lot of other water parks you go to, it's very concrete. 
you know, like there's a giant wave pool, but it's, you know, bordered on, a, you know, big concrete barriers and it's just jam full with people. And it, it, it kind of looks like a giant bathtub with a lot of people in it. <laughs> so to me, like that was the difference. It, it felt a little bit more authentic, even though you're in Orlando, you know. And, and especially having gone behind the scenes with them, um, you know, about a year before it even opened to uh, to, to meet the people that ha- had gone down to the South Pacific and really met with with so many of the cultures that are represented in this this kind of hybrid idea of the Waturi people that they designed the park around. Yeah, they, they they did. They made it feel like the South Pacific. And and we've done overwater bungalow places down in the South Pacific. We've we've traveled all around New Zealand, et cetera. And, and yes, they did a very, very good job of, of bringing those cultural elements in, in in a really respectful way. I didn't see anything that I would get offended by or anything else if I was from New Zealand um, or, or Bora Bora, Tahiti, wherever. Uh, but no, to me, it, it just felt really good. And, and you're right, kind of, kind of enveloping as, as far as walking around and pretending that you're somewhere else. Yeah, which is nice when you're in Orlando. So, so, is, um, <laughs> so is that where, just really quickly, um, the main pool that in that area that you guys are talking about, is that kind of the main area where people hang out? Like, are there chairs there and stuff? And if there are, were you able, I guess, Tamara, were you able to get chairs? And how does that work? Yeah, that's a really good question. Something that I worried about, and I actually had asked Eric about before I went. So there, I, I always worry about getting chairs. It's always like the first thing I want to do if I go to a water park, especially because I don't want to go on the rides. I want to like hang out and relax for a while. So it is the main area, but there are a lot of other areas with chairs. So if you got there and you didn't find a chair, I don't think you need to panic. Like there are other beach areas like off of where the different um, like lazy type rivers are and just other areas near where there's more of like a toddler area. So there's definitely other areas for chairs. You can reserve chairs, but I called, I think, 10 days in advance and they were already fully booked up. So definitely if you're going to do that for a cabana or chair, you have to call way in advance. But what were your thoughts, Eric? I mean, to me, that's where we hung out. Uh, absolutely. And yeah, the main beach area is, is right in the front there. And it's what you're going to see in a lot of the pictures uh, uh, with the, the pool and the volcano right there. The pool, the volcano is really in the middle of the park and everything surrounds it. But the volcano pool is all kind of in the front in between the uh, front entrance um, and, and the volcano there. So that's the largest beach area. But I'm looking at the map right now and it looks like there are a good 10 or more seating areas Uh Per what you were just talking about, so uh, so yeah, there there are plenty of places to go and, and grab chairs. Um, there there's shade to varying degrees, probably not a lot unless you're paying to rent the shaded chairs. But really, if you're walking around, if you're going to be in a restaurant for summer or whatever, I, I didn't feel like it was a big deal. Yeah, and I was I mean I was there in early June. It was really hot, really humid. But you're at a water park, like you're you're getting wet, and so I didn't feel like you needed. Um, I felt like the shade that we had was fine. Exactly. And there are umbrellas by a lot of the, the sitting areas that there are misters around. And so I, I was there on some hot days too and didn't feel like it, it was uh, horrible at all. One cool thing that I liked, I don't know if you noticed this, Eric, but on a lot of the pathways, they had misters onto the path so that you weren't work, walking on like burning concrete. Correct. Oh, Nice. Although you could bring your, you could wear your shoes and just put them in a little cubby um, right by the start of every ride. So it's not like you had to walk around barefoot. But if you were, you know how it is when you're walking on you know, just pavement that is so hot in the summer sun. And I, I did both to try it out. I walked around for a few hours barefooted and I walked around a lot with flip flops. Um, yeah, there, there are pros and cons to both. Uh, it, it did get hot in some areas walking around with bare feet. Um, but on the flip side, um, as you saw, there are the little flip-flop holders at, at the front of all of the rides. But unfortunately, some of those aren't right by the splash pools where you're coming out. So then you have, still have to, you know, walk barefooted all the way back to the start of the ride time, kind of to pick up your shoes, unless you thought ahead and left them by the the pool where you're going to be exiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so if you are barefooted, um, you just don't need to worry about that at all. Yeah, and you can't always quite tell where you're going to come out of a ride, right? Exactly. Um, so I think one of the big differences about Volcano Bay, though, is the Tapu Tapu system. So maybe you can talk our listeners through what that is and how it works. 
Yep. So when you uh, arrive, as soon as you get your ticket scanned, you are handed a Tapu Tapu wristband. And it's it's a slightly bulky uh, rubber wristband uh, that is your device all day that will basically it'll check you in for rides. Um, Universal really promises that there are no lines, which, which I think they're still working out the kinks on that a little bit. But basically, when you go around, there are 13 different areas of the park. Um, and all of the slide areas have check-ins where you can go to a little uh, screen uh, at the very uh, front of the ride and you can tap your wristband. And you are then in a virtual line to be buzzed when it is your time to come back. And that could be immediate. Well, if it's immediate, you don't even have to wait in line. You could just walk right onto the ride. But otherwise, it could be anywhere between five minutes. And and I saw as much as two hours. I know they're going to work on getting that down. Um, and I hear it's already better than it was at the very, very beginning of the summer. Um, but basically, then you're, you're, it'll vibrate. And you'll say, okay, it's, it's time to return to this ride. And at that point, you have all day to return. You can return at any time. Uh, there's still probably going to be a short line when you do return, since, since they can't predict how quickly people are actually going to show up when, once the uh, vibration happens. Uh, the thing is, you can only really be checked in for one slide ride, and I believe the aqua coaster at any given time. Um, so if you don't want to go right back to a ride... And, and, and ride, you want to eat lunch or whatever, well, you can't check in for another one until you have uh, gone and, and ridden that ride. But oh. otherwise, um, and the Tapu Tapu also works for the locker rentals. Uh, if you tie it into the app, into your credit card, you can you can purchase food with it. Um, so it really is only if you stay things. on site, right? Only if you're on site, can you do that? Uh, say that again? Is it only if you're staying at a Universal Resort that you can tie it into purchases? I don't believe so. I mean, I was staying at a Universal Resort, but if you download the Universal app in advance and you put in your credit card number, um, and then you just tie it to your Tapu Tapu as soon as you show up, um, from what I understand, it, it can be just your your payment device all day. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I knew you could do it if you're staying um, on site, but I didn't know about the app, so that's cool. Because we weren't staying on site for that time, so... Uh, I was like, no, guys, it's just, you know, you still have to carry some money around. It's just for the um, for the rides. But, yeah, the, the challenging thing about that is that you can only check into one at a time. And yeah. if you check into one that has a two hour wait, you know, that means you're spending two hours, you know, either in the wave pool or the, you know, they basically they have like a lazy river and a slightly less lazy river. I thought it was also still pretty lazy. But um, the so you're kind of stuck with that. So I feel like you need to think about when you time which rides like so if you if you get there early, you know, and you can get in to a queue for the one of the like the aqua coaster one of the ba- main rides then it's hopefully shorter but if you're there like and you're trying to do it midday then you might want to go for some of the smaller rides and then wait till later to do the the big rides what do you think eric is do you, do you have any strategies around that it, it's tough and and we're going back in a month and so i'll be able to really go through everything as, as a normal guest uh the first day that we went was media day and so we could literally go to any rides that we wanted. And on the Aqua Coaster, I think we rode it four times in a row because nobody was waiting. <laughs> and, and that was a very unique experience because nobody will ever get to do that again. Right, right. Yeah, then the next day, yeah, I experienced lines. And so really had to think through that process of, okay, what do I want to check in for? And I, I did have the luxury of saying, oh, well, I rode that yesterday, so I don't need to do that again today or whatever. But absolutely, I, th- I think, um, and, and I was going to get to this later, but Right now, they're they're hitting capacity early in the day, yeah. virtually every day uh, during the summer, and and so entrance is not guaranteed by any means. It, it's simply that they've developed a, a water park that that's too popular for its own good. So so they are still working out the kinks with lines with with tapu tapu wait times, and everything else. But um, you really you you want to get there early. You want to run and and get on a ride or two early before you even have to queue up, and then yeah, absolutely tap and and queue. And at that point, go to a lazy river, then go to that ride. And th- to me, that's the only way. If, if they're hitting capacity, it's the only way that you could really go on more than maybe three or four slides in a day. Um, you know, and, and like you said, water parks are also about relaxation. It's about the beach. It's about dining, uh, the lazy river, et cetera. But if you are a major slide fan, you better get there early and, and go on what you can, or, um, you know, as soon as possible before the, the wait starts. 
So quickly, yeah, I, I think, just go ahead. So quickly, I just wanted to clarify a couple things. So, um, number one, do they tell you what the weight is when you're tapping in? Yeah, they absolutely. Do. Okay, it's on the screen. And then the second thing is, so you cannot go into, you can't choose to bypass. It's not like fast pass, like at Disney, where you can choose to stand by or you can choose the fast pass. My understanding from you guys is that you have to tap in to be able to ride. Correct, unless okay. you get there very first and there is no wait time on the rides, which is going to be the case the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. But you're, yeah, still, tapping, some of, you're still tapping in. You don't you're have tapping, to on those. But you're basically just walking right in. You don't yeah, even some, have to tap the tapu, tapu. It just says ride now. And you walk yeah. in the entrance and it'll, you'll be scanned really quickly and then you'll, you'll walk on. Okay, so yeah, right. Yeah, I think it says so. something like no tap or no tap or something like that. It says on the screen and so you can just go on. But that yeah, that'll only be in the very early morning and probably at some of the, the, the rides that are a little further back. I know like... When I went, the girls went right to like the aqua coaster or something like that and tapped. And then they were kind of off doing their thing. And I went around and looked at all the other rides and all the ride times. And so the ones like all the way in the back, you could just walk onto those in the in the early morning. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So what are some of your guys' favorite rides that you both had at Volcano Bay? Eric, let's start with you. I, the Hanu Ika Moana slides are, if, if you go in, they're kind of around uh, to the right towards the back. And uh, the, there are two slides there. Uh, both of them are multi-person slides. Uh, but the blue half, the Hanu side, uh, has these two sweeping areas where you almost feel like you're going to fly off, which I guess is the goal with any roller coaster type, you know, slide ride or whatever. You want that tiny bit of fear in there. But um, really, really cool and cool views almost over Orlando in the area as as you're flying up the sides of this slide. And so to me, that that felt different than other things I had done. And then the aqua coaster was crazy. Like like I I wasn't expecting something so roller coaster like in, in essentially a log ride. Um, I've, I've done, obviously, log rides all around the world at different parts of Disney and Universal Parks and everything like that. And, and you generally know how they work. You're, you're brought up on belts, and then you go down uh, chutes. But the Aqua Coaster, I never quite figured out the mechanism behind it, but you are flying up and down and around and, and, and places where you feel like gravity should be pulling you in the other direction. And it was a really, really cool, unique ride. And and. I, I think I said it before, but I, I believe you can be checked in with the, for the aqua coaster and one of the slides at any given time because the aqua coaster is so popular. So definitely, everyone should uh, go and experience that one. That was Hannah's favorite too, and her friend Ruby because uh, it was also a lot longer than they expected. You know, you think some of those rides are over so quickly, and they were like, "Yeah, you just kept going, like you know, up and down," and it, like like Eric said, surprised them. And you know, you always like that surprise and delight of something different too. Yeah, it was very different, and it goes through the the middle of the volcano, which is kind of cool. Yeah. It's good to know that you can kind of tap in for that one and then still ride other slides, because that's that's kind of a good little tip. Yeah, definitely. So when we were there, we went to, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the little restaurant right now, but it was, I know Hannah had some tuna and someone else had some taco, you know, some like fish tacos or something, but you know, definitely the food was better than you would expect at uh, a water park. And I think that that was the main part of their, their plan too, was to really differentiate on food. So Eric, did you have any favorites and anything that you would recommend? I loved the jerk mac and cheese. Huh. Um, and it was, I believe, back by the Hanu slide at, I want to say, Waka YY Eats. I can uh, look it up and see if that was the correct name. But uh, that, that was the best thing that I had all day. It was, it was excellent and different. But yeah, Universal overall really puts a lot of thought into the food at, at all of their theme parks and even at, at the... Uh, the central city walk area there. Uh, And so, um, yeah, I I, I was impressed there, but then I've always kind of been impressed by the food around there. They, they they make a real effort to make it better than, than one would expect. And variety too, which was good. Correct. Yeah. There, there are a bunch of different places in the, in the park to eat. Um, I, I saw people getting sushi, um, barbecue, et cetera. But yeah, I like, uh, yeah, and it is Waka YY Eats uh, was my favorite place kind of towards the, uh, the back right of the park. 
Sounds good. So let's talk about top tips because I know both of you kind of came out right away with posts on your site that we'll be sure to link to in our show notes. But what are some of your top tips for visiting Volcano Bay, Eric? And then Tamara, maybe you can jump into. Honestly, given how popular it is right now, I would say that, that there is an advantage to staying on site because, uh, like you're saying, Kim, there, there is no fast pass express pass option right now. I think that was part of their initial strategy. And they realized that, that given the crowds, that just wasn't working, uh, especially given uh, that they, they want to avoid lines whenever possible. So the only way to really get that head start or, or to get an advantage is to stay on site and get in, uh, get in an hour early. And so that would be the case at any of the the on-site Universal Hotels, but then Cabana Bay, which is right next door, also has a private entrance. Uh, so, so that is, and that's, there, there are two hotels that I have not stayed at before at Universal, Cabana Bay, and Portofino Bay. I'll be staying at Portofino um, at the end of next month, and so then Cabana Bay will be the only one that I'm missing. Uh, but it is, I've walked through there, I, I've toured the rooms, it, it's a neat little hotel, it's one of their more budget options. But it's right next to Volcano Bay with, like I said, a, a private entrance and, and early admittance. So I think I think right now most of the – and I get emails every day about Volcano Bay from different people who have gone or are going. And, and it's the crowds that, that everyone's talking about and, and trying even just to get in um, if they're filling up by 10 or 11 in the morning a lot of days. And so, yeah, stay on site, I would say, um, and, and go early. Go very, very early. If you're staying on site at one of the other hotels, do you have to then take bus transport in? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, but Cabana Bay, you could just walk right in. That's good to know. And then can you, because I know some parks, this is kind of one of our top tips when we visit theme parks, is that typically sometimes they open the turnstiles even like a half an hour early to start kind of getting people through, even though the rides don't start until the actual opening time. Do you guys, either of you know if that works there? No idea at all from my perspective. I think I went right when they opened my second day. Um, and so, no, I don't know if they open that up. It, it would make sense because um, you're going to have to walk a little bit to get to any of the rides anyways. But nope, don't know. Yeah, and I don't know because we were staying off site. So people were already in there because they were um, on site. My thing that I would add, though, about Cabana Bay, we did stay at Cabana Bay uh, the first time we went to Universal. Um, I have a post to, about that that I can link to in the show notes, too. I had heard a lot of people talk about how it's just a five-minute walk to Cabana Bay. So we were uh, from Cabana Bay. So we were actually, we stayed at the Waldorf, which is closer to Disney. We took an Uber over, and he was like, oh, no, you have to go through City Walk. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to go to City Walk and then take a shuttle. So I'm like, you know what, drop us off at Cabana Bay thinking I'm so, so smart, right? So we get there, we walk over to the entrance and you, it's only for Cabana Bay guests. You have to show your room key. So uh, we had to then walk back, wait for a shuttle to take us over to City Walk and then take the, the shuttle from City Walk to Volcano Bay. So that put us like really behind and I was a little stressed out. But, um, so don't think you can be that smart. <laughs> that <would> be- <laughs> But you are allowed to do that if you are staying at any of the other four on-site hotels. And, and so, so any of those, if you do wind up at Cabana Bay, and I don't know that that's faster to get to Cabana Bay, and then walk through the private entrance than it would be simply to, uh, to take one of the, the other shuttles. But um, yeah, any, any of the on-site guests can enter through Cabana Bay. Oh, that's good to know, because when I got to the gate, they asked for your Cabana Bay uh, room key. So I assumed it was just for those guests and I think um, I have you know, not tested it but I've been told that it's for any of the guests maybe yeah. they just say it because they're used to it being majority of those guests right, right. The other people just take the shuttle straight from their hotels yeah, yeah that's and- what I was trying to think through if there's any advantage at all to, to going through Cabana Bay to get there and there probably isn't I mean the Cabana Bay entrance brings you right into the front banners of Volcano Bay anyways and so if, if there's a shuttle straight from your hotel, which there was for us at Sapphire Falls, then that's going to drop you right off at the front anyways. Yeah. And I well, hope and I, that eventually they'll solve this problem of there's not like it looks like they're still kind of constructing um, more of a main entrance because where you get dropped off now, it feels like I don't know, it doesn't feel like a, a where it's permanently going to be. But if you are staying off site, you know, you do have to get to City Walk first park or you know if you've taken a cab or something there then you then you have to wait for your shuttle 
over to Volcano Bay. So my thing is, if you're going to get there early, make sure you leave enough time in your morning. Yeah, exactly. It's not so easy as, oh, I'm just going to take a cab over to the entrance to Volcano Bay. No, you have to take a cab to City Walk and then the shuttle. So this is if you're staying off site. Which, Where's you know, the I shuttle know, at at City Walk? It's right next to all the other shuttles that would go to all the other ho- uh, all the other Universal hotels. So, like in the same place, you would pick up uh, cabs or an Uber okay. too. Huh. You may have only have you only driven and parked in the parking lots. Yep. Yeah. It's basically the same place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, going on that, I know that. In comparison, you know, for example, Disneyland has a private entrance with one of their hotels, but they man it with less security checkpoints and less turnstiles. So when people try and kind of get around the system and line up at that hotel private entrance, it backs up sometimes just as much or more because the main entrance has more turnstiles and more people working. Mm. So I bet if a lot of people try and sneak through the Cabana Bay, it might actually build up more. Yeah, because it's definitely just one, you know, one person standing there. Yeah. I know a lot of visitors will combine a trip to Volcano Bay with Universal's other parks. So um, I know you guys have both stayed in some Universal Orlando hotels. Do you have your favorite hotels? My favorite is Hard Rock. Um, I think because of the pool and because it's the closest to be able to simply walk over to the gates of Universal Studios and walk right in. And several of the, the on-site hotels offer uh, free express passes with your uh, with your room stay, and, and Hard Rock is one of those. So, so you get uh, Cabana Bay isn't it, basically the, the more budget ones do not offer that, um, and, and the the three higher end uh, do. And so, so I, I like Hard Rock both for that express pass and, and just for the the, the closeness to the park. Um, the others, I mean, it works well taking either the shuttles or, or more typically the water taxis that, that are kind of running every I don't know maybe ten minutes. Um, but it sure is easier just walking a couple minutes over there and going straight into the park. Yeah, we only stayed at the Cabana Bay, and I will say, um, I mean, it has some good features, like, you know, fun pools. They have, like, the underwater music, just like they do at the Hard Rock, I think. Um, a lazy river, some slides. There's a bowling alley in there. So it's definitely very kid-centric, and they have suites that have little kitchenettes. So that's helpful for families looking to save a little bit. But if you are looking for express passes, you know, if you're a family of four or like Eric's with five, then it probably makes sense to pay a little bit more for the hotel room and get those free express express passes for us as a family of three, uh, it didn't necessarily pay. So I think you have to do some of that math too and figure out, you know, if you really want to do the express pass, like, are you going at a busy time where you're really going to need that? Or you have limited time in the park and you want to make sure that you're not spending it waiting in lines. So then it's worth, you know, paying a little bit more for one of those premium properties. It's the, the Royal Pacific, the Hard Rock, and the Portofino that offer those. Speaking of those express passes, a quick question, because uh, we've used the express pass there. And I know there's two different types. The one we had, you can go on the rides multiple times, which is a huge benefit. Unlimited, yes. right. So is that what comes with the hotel ones, or is that the one that you can just do the express line once? Do you guys it's know? the unlimited. Um, oh, I, I'm pretty sure it's unlimited. I, okay. I've yeah. never encountered anything, and, I, and my kids always want to go on rides like the mummy more than once, yeah. and I sure never, never uh, been turned away or anything else when, when that's scanned or looked at. So yeah, I, it, it has to be unlimited. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, and, and, and staying on hotels, I should mention that in August, we're staying at Portofino Bay in one of the Minion Suites. And uh, my kids are very excited about that. And so that that easily could be our favorite hotel <laughs> after that. That'll be cute. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you have any other kind of final tips to share about Volcano Bay? From my perspective, like I said, I get a lot of different questions about what people can bring in, mm-hmm. what they should bring with them, etc. Um, I would say if you can, bring bring your own towels. Uh, they rent them for, I think, about $5 each. But if you have your own towels, you can, you can save a little bit of money there. You're not allowed to bring in coolers. You are allowed to bring in water bottles. They really don't want other food and drinks. They, they say that you, you, if you have an allergy, you can bring in maybe a soft-sided cooler with, with some food, and they don't make you document it. Um, and, and I know a lot of people try to get around that and bring in their own food or snacks or whatever. So, I mean, I guess 
my overall advice is if you do want to bring in food, don't bring everything from your breakfast breakfast buffet at the hotel or anything. You know, bring in a couple of granola bars, bring in a few small snacks, and you should be fine. And you're probably not going to be hassled because um, obviously security is going to go through all of your bags regardless of which entrance you're using. Um, so, yeah, bring towels. Maybe bring a snack or two if, if you want, but but no more than that. And, and water bottles. And, and otherwise, like you are saying, the, the, the food on site is great. So, uh there's not really much reason to bring your own stuff other than saving a few dollars, but, uh, but the food's good. And so I, I would just recommend getting lunch there. It's good to know that they do recognize the allergy thing as an allergy family. <laughs> right. That's, that's a big thing. Cool. Yeah. And I think when it comes to bringing a water bottle, bring an insulated one because, you know, there are places to refill, but it's going to get warm really fast. Um, so what we did is we just invested in those refillable cups like they have at, you know, the the other universal parks, um, which you can refill with, you know, they have the Coke freestyle things, but it's not, we're not soda drinkers. So it's not just soda. They do have like lemonade and some other things in there. So it's just nice to have a nice insulated um, cup and you know, you can go up and get ice and refreshment because it is important to stay hydrated because it, especially if you're there in the summer. So we know that you're a great photographer. Um, did you find any amazing spots to take a family photo at Volcano Bay? At Volcano Bay, I mean, it, it centers around the volcano, the Krakatau volcano right in the middle. And so if I, I you're, you're going to kind of want that in, in a photo. Uh, the best perspective is going to be right almost from the front entrance or, or when you go in slightly and, and you see the beach right there. I think that's your best bet. I know that there's one little photo stand and I actually didn't take any pictures from it. Um, there, there's some basic, you know, Moai type statues around there that you can get in those. But I, I would say almost tw- right towards the front of the park. And especially if, if the light is good, if you're getting there early, take a family photo then. And, and plus, you're not sweaty at that point. You're not wet yet or anything else. And the whole family's together and it's not running around separated. So, uh, so yeah, enter, take a good family photo right there with the volcano behind you and then stash your camera and everything else in a locker and, and enjoy the day. Yeah, I think it's a good reminder to people to say to do it early. I, well, I I was happy even when I was there that I did a lot of uh, picture taking early because it rained. You know, the huge rain clouds came in. We were actually kind of huddled under some shelter for about an hour or so. So you never know what's going to happen later in the day, not to mention, like you said, getting sweaty and messy. Good point. Good tips. So Eric, our question that we ask all of our guests is what do you wear when you travel? So do you have anything to share from a guy's point of view or maybe uh, water park specific? Um, I think water park specifically, again, I get, I get a lot of questions. And so people have asked me about water shoes, about rash guards, about pouches with cameras and, and all of that stuff. So I think, I mean, for for Volcano Bay, go simple. Flip-flops maybe or bare feet. Uh, swimsuit rash guard for guys works well, except that I, uh, we did need to remove them for the drop slides that go straight down through the volcano. I think otherwise it would have wound up over my head. And yeah, and no loose items on any of the rides, really. You're, you're allowed to take a, a camera or something on, on the Lazy River, I believe. But otherwise, people are always emailing me wanting to sneak in GoPros and, and try to record rides and everything else. And I really don't see how you could do that, how you could get a camera past the, the, the person at the top. Or, you know, if you have a little pocket or whatever, you're not going to have time on those slides. They go so fast to, to pull it out and start recording or anything. So I would say, honestly... Dress simply, dress for the beach, um, and, and don't try to take anything onto the rides. And, and actually, just get offline for a day. Don't feel like you need to be checking your camera or taking selfies everywhere. You get a locker, put everything away, and, and enjoy it. And they do have pretty nice locker rooms and changing rooms if you want to change up afterwards. Because the thing that I was thinking about was that when you're all wet, uh, getting onto like the air-conditioned shuttle bus can be chilly. So sometimes it's nice just to change out of the wet clothes. That's a good tip. So thanks, Eric, for all that great information. Uh, We'll be sure to link to your post about Volcano Bay in our show notes. But where can people find you and follow along with your travels? Because I'm sure you have some exciting stuff coming up. For example, you said you're going to Volcano Bay next week or next month. So that's good. 
Yep, actually tomorrow I am uh, flying to Italy with my family. We'll be in Lake Como, uh, renting a villa right on the lake for two weeks, and then going to Greece, to Naxos and Santorini for about 10 days, and then finishing up in Prague. And then we get back to California with like two days to spare before heading to Orlando for a few days to uh, close out the summer with one last visit to Universal. But um, but yeah, I'm at Travel Bobbo everywhere. Uh, travel B A B B O on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest or anywhere that you want to try to find me. And I will be posting in August, in, but not as much. I'm, I'm really going to try to take a vacation and, and not be worrying about updating my blog or, or anything else. So so I will be relaxing, but feel free to follow along and I will post periodically. That's great. Awesome. Enjoy it. I hear that uh, Italy has been really, really hot, you know, like uh, over 100. So I hope that you enjoy some cooler time at the lake. Uh, up in the north, it shouldn't be that bad. I mean, it, it's basically right on the border of Switzerland, and, and so you're, you're getting up into slightly higher elevations, and, and I don't think it's going to get that hot up there, but uh, thanks for the notice. That will be nice. Well, enjoy, and thanks again. Thank Take you much. Always a pleasure. We're back with our app of the week, and this one was already mentioned by Eric, but definitely be sure that you download the Universal Orlando app, because even if you're heading to Volcano Bay, it sounds like there's still a benefit to using it. Nice to link to a credit card and just be able to kind of charge your things to your Tapu Tapu. And I'm thinking that, you know, that would be another benefit to having that so you could lock everything away, right, Tamara? Yeah, we, I mean, we use the Tapu Tapu for our lockers, but I didn't realize at the time the connection with the app. So it's really good. And, you know, just having the app, you're probably going to Universal as well. And they're adding more features like now uh, the new Jimmy Fallon ride at Universal Studios has a virtual queue that you can sign up on the app uh, for a time to go and ride that. So right. I, I think Universal is going more and more in that direction, which is great. So just more reasons that you should have the app. Very cool. Nice. Good. Well, I just want to give a a shout out to Martha who left a comment on our Atlanta episode and she just explored Atlanta at the beginning of the month. And it really sounds like a lot of the places that Leslie had recommended to us. And I will be hitting some of these sites uh, next week when Hannah and I head off on our road trip as well. But they went to the MLK Center, the Center for Civil Rights and the Centennial Park and CNN and the Aquarium. So thanks, Martha, for leaving us a comment and thanks for listening. Yes. Thanks, Martha, for listening. All right. And until then, we will talk to you next week. Talk to you then. Bye. Bye.